The text touches on several core topics that ignite public debate, such as government overreach, personal liberty, and the obligations of leadership. Kamala Harris is portrayed as a dictatorial figure wielding excessive power to oppose her will. The notion that her leadership is driven by outside influences rather than genuine convictions raises serious concerns about truth and autonomy. Uh, Kamala Harris is a, a war hawk on Ukraine. She's a war hawk on, on China. I think that we should be figuring out ways to coexist with the rest of the world as best we can. Of course, we need to protect our national security. I think she's not going to do anything about the national deficit. I've never heard her speak about the chronic disease epidemic, about I think she's a product of the corporate control of our democracy. And she's one of the authors of, um, in, the, in terms of civil rights, she has one of the worst civil rights record of any public official. She's the author of the, uh, one of the primary authors of the school to prison pipeline. She kept 5,000 people despite a Supreme Court order that she released 5,000 prisoners and of nonviolent drug crimes who were illegally in California jails. She kept them in there saying that we needed them for firefighting and for other public work services. And that's just a, made, a modern version of indentured servitude, a modern version of slavery. Uh, she was the leading, one of the lead, two leading public officials in California, which now has the worst education system, 49th in education outcomes in the country. 50% of the homeless people in our country are in California, and she was behind those policies. So I don't think she has a good, um, I don't think, in terms of the traditional democratic principles, I don't think she has a credible record. RFK Jr.'s claim that Kamala Harris is an anti-record as a government tyrant immediately resonates with conservative ideals. It criticizes public figures who seem to expand government power at the expense of individual freedoms. With Harris's policies, especially in areas like criminal justice, framed as prime examples of this overreach, allegations about her role in the school-to-prison pipeline detaining inmates for public labor, and the broader governance of California are positioned as violations of the principles of liberty and limited government. RFK Jr.'s reference to government slavery, forcing nonviolent prisoners into labor, is presented as both morally bankrupt and a manipulation of power for state interests. These criticisms extend to national security and fiscal conservatism. RFK Jr. suggests that Harris's silence on the national debt and widespread chronic health issues signals a leadership failure. Financial responsibility, a core tenet of conservative philosophy, seems abandoned as Harris overlooks the growing fiscal deficit, neglecting caution and long-term planning. In matters of global security, she is described as a war hawk, eager to intervene in conflicts involving Ukraine and China favoring aggressive foreign policies over diplomacy. The idea that Harris is merely a product of corporate control over our democracy strikes at the issue of authenticity, challenging her ability to act independently or make genuine choices. If viewed solely as a puppet of corporate and political interests, Harris loses credibility as a leader guided by personal conviction. This erosion of authenticity leads to a greater moral downfall where actions no longer align with one's core beliefs, but instead serve a faceless system. The loss of authenticity becomes a betrayal of public trust. RFK Jr.'s critique spans a wide array of concerns, from human rights abuses and government overreach to failing education systems. He paints Harris as a leader who disregards democratic values, neglects individual freedoms, and is indifferent to the long-term impact of her decisions, fostering a growing crisis of public confidence. Many may feel that the person entrusted to safeguard liberty is instead eroding it through heightened control.